Eight years ago, two brothers set out to explore filmmaking by recreating their favorite film. But this is not the product of that endeavor. This is the film you never got to see. I'm Mason McGrew, and today we're going to look at some stuff that I should have deleted a long time ago. Our story begins back in the year 2008, with the spark that set roughly all of this in motion. This was one of the first things we ever shot. This was the best thing we ever made. Well, that's what we thought of the time at least. But fast forward to the year 2011, and this is what you'll find. Buzz, shoot your laser at my badge! Woody, no, will kill you, just do it! One of the first scenes Morgan recreated of Toy Story 3. At this point in time, Morgan and I were just messing around, having fun, recreating a couple scenes here and there, experimenting with filmmaking and stop motion animation. But we didn't have this goal to recreate an entire film yet. It wasn't until a year later, 2012, when our heads came together to release this masterpiece to YouTube. Now come on guys, we all knew this day was coming. We're getting thrown away! No, no one's getting thrown away! It's a very amateur recreation of the original Toy Story 3 trailer that we released to announce that we were going to recreate as many scenes from the film as possible and then upload them to YouTube. And thus, Toy Story 3 in real life was born. None of that footage from 2012 really saw the light of day though. Every shot in that version was eventually redone for the final film, sometimes more than once. Early on in the project, we were using a lot of puppetry and chuckimation with a little stop motion. We actually recreated a majority of Toy Story 3 in this style, but it wasn't quite where Morgan and I wanted it to be yet. Our attention to detail just wasn't the best. The techniques we used were chosen by convenience, instead of by which was best for the scene. Our understanding of lighting was basic, as well as shot composition. And it never really felt right. The footage of this version of our film felt like we were just doing it to do it. It didn't feel like we were bringing anything new to the table. Hence, why we decided to reshoot some shots. And not just shots either. There were some entire edited scenes that were redone because we thought they weren't as good as they could be. Which is easy for us to say now, but when we shot it the first time, that was the best we could do. So we had to allow ourselves to not get it right the first time. As years went on, we realized maybe that wasn't the best. Maybe we're capable of more, so we challenged ourselves to be better. It wasn't enough for us to just do it, to finish it. We easily could have finished the project in 2015-2016, but it wouldn't have been anything that we would have wanted to show off to the world, and more importantly, to Pixar and the storytellers that inspired us to do the project from the beginning. A major question we started to ask ourselves was, does it feel right? Not just to the original piece, but to the world that we recreated. This didn't feel right, but this did. In part, this has to do with the medium that we decided to recreate the film in. It wasn't until halfway into the project where I think there was a defining moment where we decided to shoot a majority of the film in stop motion. Basically restarting with an emphasis on our roots. We still used a little puppetry and chuckimation, but those techniques became supplementary to a remake that was mainly shot in stop motion. I specifically remember having a conversation with Morgan about that creative decision when we were shooting the computer map scene. In fact, the first time we shot those scenes, we shot them in stop motion and with strings and puppeting as well, some of which made it into the final cut. Even some of the stop motions that we did then were later reshot to either add more character to our recreation or to add more emphasis on actions. One of the scenes I'm personally most proud of shooting was the stuff in Ken's dream house. I feel like there's a really good vibe of the set, the stop motion, and the overall lighting, especially during the disco ball stuff, since that was all practically shot, frame by frame moving a miniature disco ball around while also stop motion animating the characters. This wasn't always the scene that I was proud of though. Like many scenes, all the stuff inside of Ken's dream house was reshot. The original version was shot six years before the final version, back in 2013. 
Morgan and I worked together on shooting these, with one of us doing the puppeting and one of us on the camera. Later into the project, we actually split up the workload and worked on separate scenes, and would only work on the same scene if it required a little extra assistance. But when it comes down to a single scene like this, it, it's just one scene, one of many that we improved on later. I think it goes to show, if you don't get it right the first time, don't give up. Learn from what works and what doesn't. As Lee Unkridge, the director of Toy Story 3 said when he tweeted about our project, I can't decide if this is brilliant or insane. Lesson to be learned. If you start something, finish it. And we couldn't agree with him more. I think the Toy Story 3 in real life project is a little brilliant, but it's a lot of insane. It was an eight year long crash course on how to tell a good story. Something a lot of people wouldn't commit to or stick with as long as we had. You might be asking yourself, why does this matter how long it took? Or why does it matter how many times we restarted? Well, it really doesn't. Eight years, a couple weeks, maybe a couple hours, it doesn't make a difference how long the journey takes. What matters is that you get there in the end. When it comes to Morgan and I's story, it took eight years to get to a point where we could say, hey, this is what we're capable of, and this is how much we love this film. But there's also a line in the sand that we had to draw. Because, yes, we wanted to recreate the film shot for shot in real life, the best that we could. But the final product shouldn't and couldn't be 100% perfect. It couldn't all be the best that we're capable of. That perfect version already exists. That's Pixar's Toy Story 3. If every shot was perfect in our passion project, it wouldn't have had any value. Because it wasn't just about recreating our all-time favorite film the best that we could. It was about learning how to create something like our all-time favorite film. With the resources that we had available, and with the people willing to join us along the way. So when we show you this slate right before our film, it's not just words, it's a promise. A promise that what you're about to watch isn't just a fan remake but two people's journey to becoming better storytellers. So even though you may have never seen the footage that we scrapped, you've seen the soul of it in our final product. Thank you for watching and supporting us through this little journey that we decided to go on. Feel free to leave us a comment and let us know if you enjoy these kind of behind the scenes type videos. And until next time, stay safe and stay creative.